Good morning, everyone. My name is Tony. Welcome to South Peoria Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're spending part of your Sunday with us. Thank you for being here. There's a lot going on here at South Peoria, so be sure to grab one of our handouts and check out everything that's happening, like our growth track that happens every Sunday after second service. If you're new to South Peoria, or if you want to learn more about our church and, and possibly join, be sure to join us for our growth track that happens again after second services every Sunday. We also have information about South Peoria University. We're going to be starting some new classes soon, so check out the handout for more information. Thank you again. Have a blessed week. All right, good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Anthony. I'm the youth pastor and worship leader here at South Peoria. When you walked in, hopefully you got one of these, a bulletin. On the inside, there is a communication card. So if you're a guest with us today, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, you can go ahead and fill that out, and you can tear it out and drop it in the offering plate later on in our service. And on the inside, there is a prayer card. And so you can go ahead and fill that out. If there's a prayer need or a, or a praise, uh, we would love to pray for you. Our church staff meets together every week, and we pray over these cards. <clears throat> and then on the inside, there is a section for notes. So as uh, James brings the word, Pastor James, you can write down uh, some notes so you can live it out throughout the week. And on the backhand side, there is some information on the events going on here at South Peoria. You can see uh, we have today the Jamie Applewhite Memorial Ride and Lunch. And so uh, that's why they're sitting up in the back. Uh, we would love for you all to be able to stay afterwards um, as we celebrate uh, the life of Jamie and the legacy that she left uh, serving in youth ministry. And so there's also more details of things that are going on uh, later on this week and this month. So if you'll stand with me, church, as we start our morning off with prayer. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we can be here this morning and worship you. We thank you for the, the ride this morning that um, everyone is able to arrive here safely. And Jesus, I pray that as we worship you this morning, as we dive into your word, that you will speak to us in a powerful way. God, I pray that those that, of us that are saved, we will further your kingdom and we will show that love to others. And Lord, for anybody in this place that is lost or that doesn't know what it is to follow you, that they can experience salvation this morning. It's all for your glory, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. Go ahead and take this time and welcome those around you. Sing this out. I've 
been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. I ain't the same, a prodigal returned. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. shackles and chains but I've been freed and forgiven and I'm not going back I'll never be the same that's why I sing all my hope is in Jesus thank God that yesterday's gone Let's sing this out, church. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. And all my sins are forgiven. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. your Bibles, go ahead and grab them. You can turn open to the book of Romans. And if you don't have a Bible, there's a blue New Testament in the seat pocket in front of you. And you can turn to page 137. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, we're going to start in verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. But there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's pray. Jesus, we pray that this morning we look and we, uh, we thank you for, for Jamie Applewhite and the gift that she was, Lord, and how she served her family, but Lord, that she served the church. She served students, God, and she left a legacy. So today, as we reflect on our lives, I pray that we can ask the question if we are living for you. Jesus, do we know you? Do we follow you? And do we love you with everything that's within us? And are we leaving a legacy of how you, Jesus, are Lord and you, Jesus, are the only one that saves? We pray that this morning you are glorified, God. And that anyone in this place that is 
stagnant in their faith, that is lukewarm, that's okay with living for themselves, God, but yet they know deep down that they're a child of you, that you will correct them, that you will break them so they can follow you and pursue you, Jesus. And for the heart in this room that is heavy burdened, the heart in this room that feels like a failure, that's lost and lonely, God, I pray that you will wrap yourself around them and show them that, Jesus, you are the only way. You are the truth. You are the life. You are the resurrection, Jesus. And this morning, we are going to celebrate that. And it's in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him One final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King Has rendered you defeated Forever He is glorified was rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeated forever he is Lord. church one voice we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah, we 
sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome, forever He is glorified, forever He is lifted high, forever He is risen, He is alive. Praise your name. Because when we were at our lowest, when we were the most broken, the most undeserving, the least respectable, you stepped down off your throne and you gave your perfect life for me. You gave your life for the world. But God, there is no no kind of savior that stays dead. Three days later, you rose from the dead and you are alive today and you offer a gift to live for you, to spend the rest of our lives with you in hope and truth with life. Because there are things in this world that will promise happiness, that will promise to fill that hole deep down in our hearts, but only you can do it only you satisfy. God, even when we come to you, we are still broken. I thank you that you are so loving and gracious in being patient with us. But I pray that lives are changed today. If that's salvation, let them be brought to their knees. If it's apathy in the Christian life, let them be brought to their knees. Let us worship who you are and what you've done just like Jamie in her life pointing to you in the midst of her brokenness and her pain. She claimed Jesus is Lord. So today we claim Jesus that you are Lord of our life and we want you to move Holy Spirit. In Jesus' powerful name I pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. Good morning, church. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Well, we're here to worship today. And it's a very special day at South Peoria as we come together to worship. To thank, say exactly what Gabby was just praying. Thank you to God for blessing us with Jamie. It was a, uh, a great ride on the way here today, but as we look at the celebration of today and we look at all of the awesomeness of today and the fun of today and the good food and the fellowship today, it's all to recognize who God really is in our lives. And that's what Jamie would have wanted for us today. And uh, we honor her today by honoring God. And her legacy, as we saw Jamie over the last six or seven years serve in student ministry, she loved youth. She loved working with students. And so today what we're doing with this is to say thank you to God by continuing in that legacy and what she would have wanted in that legacy of student ministry. She gave her time. She gave her life. She took her vacation days in order to go to youth camp and uh, winter camps, and that's how they spent their time investing in students. And so we want to continue that legacy today. So every penny of today that is brought in from the proceeds, from the ride or the t-shirts or the lunch sales, everything that goes, goes directly to student ministry and, and pro providing scholarships for students to go to camp and mission trips. And so we're excited about that, yeah. And so 
I want to take a moment to say thank you to our Faith Riders ministry. This is great. Thank you for Greg for putting this, heading up and putting this together. You guys did a fantastic job. And so as we go through today, it's going to be exciting. Uh, Pastor James is going to come. He's going to bring the word. And then we're going to have some instructions after the word in order for the rest of the day. And I encourage you, invite everybody to stay for lunch today. There'll be tickets. If you don't have tickets for lunch yet, they'll be for sale after service again today. And we encourage you to stay and be a part of that. But let's pray and let's see what God has in store for us today. Heavenly Father, God, it is an honor and a blessing just to be in your presence as we come together. And God, you have created each and every one uniquely and beautifully for a purpose. You've called us by name. And today we're here to honor that. And when you get a hold of a life and a life that gives their life to you, a person who, who sees how good you are and the grace and love of Jesus Christ and forgiveness that he provides. And God, we praise you and we thank you for Jamie. And we pray today as we come together, the best way we can honor that memory of Jamie today is to listen, listen to the legacy that she left. And she loved Jesus. And so God, show us today how to do that too. Amen. Good morning and welcome again to South Peoria Baptist Church. It is exciting to be in worship here today and uh, to be a part of all that God is doing in and through our lives. I would think, let's take a moment and everyone who was on the ride stand up. Everyone who participated in the ride, oh my goodness, all around the room here today. Fantastic, awesome, thank you all very much. And turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 8. While you're turning there, we want to take a moment of time and, and pray for some folks that has had some difficult circumstances. Last Sunday, Steve, was it last Sunday or two weeks ago? Last Sunday, Steve, uh, Mother's Day. Steve uh, took the love offering that you gave, and he was in Texas, and he went uh, to the name of the church again was... Sutherland Springs, where the shooting was, and he had a very moving experience there and gave that love offering in uh, honor of the folks there and uh, as a gift from you all. And he said it was a very moving experience. Last Sunday also, there was uh, some church bombings in Indonesia. And friends of our church, Tim and Susan Kinney, in the city they live in, a uh, police uh, station was bombed. And they've asked us to please pray for the Christians there. And then the shooting in the school again this last week and uh, down in the Houston area. And so as a church, we want to pray for all of these folks and encountering some really difficult times uh, as Christians and in our world. So let's just take a moment and pray for them. Lord, as a church family, we come. Thank you for taking Steve to Texas and back and giving him an awesome experience last Sunday there at Sutherland Springs. And Lord, we pray for our sister church there as they continue Lord, to recover from the shooting that occurred in that church and the families and the circumstances around them. Lord, we pray for a community in Texas right now. Lord, 10 people were killed and others were wounded. There's a young man in jail. His family is affected. Lord, there are hundreds of people affected by this one event. And we pray, Lord, Father, that you put your loving arms about these folks. We don't have an adequate reason why these things happen outside, Lord, that sin dominates a man's heart, a woman's heart, and we make really poor choices. And Lord, we would pray for that community, the churches that are there to declare the love of Christ. Lord, the churches in Indonesia that suffered loss, and even today as Christians have been gathering there, that Lord, that you pour out your spirit and your protection upon them. Now, Lord, in this worship service, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to read from Mark chapter 8 in just a moment. I wonder if it's possible that there's anybody here in this room that's opinionated. You think? Uh, do you know anyone that's opinionated? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think everyone who's sitting in that chair where you happen to be sitting is, has an opinion. We've been, all of us, blessed with the ability to have an opinion. And your opinion reflects how you view the world. 
Your opinion reflects how you see the world around you and how you see the Lord, how you see God, how you see Christ. Today, we want to take a few moments and be able to point Jesus out with clarity, point people to Jesus, to reveal him. You could use the word worldview if you wanted to. Let's put that up here on the screen. Wonderful. Everybody has a worldview. Everybody has the ability to see the world. It's how you perceive the world. And I, when I was a little boy, I was given a set of sunglasses by my father. And you were too. May not have been actual sunglasses, like physical, but actually the, my father actually gave me some sunglasses, and I grew to see the world through my father's eyes. I spoke like he did. His opinions became my opinions. I, when someone would ask me a question, I, it was as though my father was speaking. Up until the time I was about 13 or 14, 15 years ago, old, I saw the world through my father's glasses, through his viewpoint, his lens. Then I went to high school. And then I began to see the world through a different set of glasses. I began to see the world through my friends, peer pressure. And I saw the world in a whole different way. But the problem was, it was kind of distorted. In fact, I don't see you very good out there. When I went to college, I took those glasses off, and I could see the world pretty clearly but then I got involved with some professors, and I put on some other glasses. And I began to see the world through the influence of college professors. You begin to see a trend, don't you? All of you, all of you have been given a set of lens in your lifetime. And you see the world through the influence of other people, through the influence of culture, through those lenses that we wear. And we make our choices based upon how clearly we see or we don't see. If I ask you, do you have a worldview? Some of you say, no, I don't have a worldview. I just kind of flow through life and I just kind of mind my own business. Guess what? You do have a worldview. There are three questions. I'm going to ask these three questions and you'll have an answer to them, which tells me you've got a worldview. The first question is, where in the world did the world come from? Where in the world did the world come from? How did we get here? And as God created people, are people special? Is there something called the sanctity of life in that? Do you have an opinion, an idea about where we came from and how precious life is? I think you do. All of you do. may not agree with mine, but you have an idea about it. How did the world get broken? You have an idea, don't you? How the world got broken. It's the Democrats' fault. It's the Republicans' fault. It's Obama's fault. It's those crazy Baptists' fault. It's the bikers' fault. It's, a, you know, we all got an opinion about it, don't we? How'd the world get broken? Guess what? You got a worldview because you've got an answer to that question. may not be a good answer. Lastly, how do we fix it? How do we fix this world that's broken? How do we fix it? You've got an idea about it, just like I do. Well, I tell you what. In the midst of all of our opinions and ideas, I want to know what God's Word has to say because that's the one that's endearing. That's the one that's lasting. That's the one that's got clarity. So we want to point us to Jesus today. We want with clarity to be able to lift up Jesus. Mark chapter 8 gives us a little bit of a story. The background is Jesus has just fed 4,000 men plus women and children. And after that's over, he's on his way. and They're out walking in the desert of uh, Israel, and he turns to his disciples, and he starts to ask them some questions about what they just saw and the influence of Pharisees, and it's almost like they say, duh. And there is a dullness in the, the apostles' hearts and their minds, and they're not seeing clearly. Several times, it's as though we could see and hear Jesus say, can't you see this? And they didn't. Well, we're going to pick up the narrative at this point. Jesus is in a village, and someone's eyes are about to be opened. And that's what I'm going to pray for all of us, that with clarity, our eyes will be opened. Stand with me, please, as we read Mark chapter 8. Mark 8, verse 22 says, They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and he said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. 
Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. He saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go back to that village. Jesus' disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, well, some say you're John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And I have to turn my page, and they get stuck. I don't know about your Bible, but mine gets stuck. Here we go. They're stuck again. How come they do that? Here we go. Why didn't I have it memorized? Here we go. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to see Jesus today. We want to know the truth. We want clarity today. We want clarity, the Lord, that we could see the world as you see it. You can see the problems as you see it. You can see the solution. And we could see the solution as you see it, Lord. Someone here today, I pray you'd open their eyes and ears to you. They need to give their life to you. Someone here today has lost their way, and they, with clarity, need to be able to be pointed back to you. So speak to each of us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So Jesus, with the disciples, there's a crowd that's growing. He's out doing what he likes to do, talking to people, healing people, interacting with people, interacting with the religious leaders and having arguments with them and debates with them. But most of all, he's changing people's lives. They're in a village, and a group of fellows comes up. And in the middle of these guys, they're leading a blind man. This isn't unusual. What's unusual about this story is Mark's is the only one that tells us about this. None of the other gospel stories have this story of this blind man being healed. There's something significant about him. I don't want us to miss it. Number one, somebody's taken the effort to bring them to Jesus. That's you and I. You and I have the task, if we know the Lord, to bring people to him, to be able to, with clarity, point people to Jesus so they can see him clearly. These fellows bring this blind man to Jesus. I'm jumping to a conclusion here. This man wasn't born blind. He became blind. Somewhere in the course of his life, that blindness took over his life, whether it was cataracts, uh, macular degeneration, an accident, some way or another. We're not told this man was born blind. As the story unfolds, I think we could see why I would say that. But they bring him to Jesus and say, would you heal this man, please? Please. He needs to be healed. He needs to be able to see. We could all say that, couldn't we? Every one of us, if we see a blind person, Lord, could you just open their eyes? Sometimes the greatest blindness is not the physical blindness, but the blindness of our hearts, the blindness of our attitudes, the blindness that we just won't see God. We just won't see the truth. We just won't see the consequences of our behavior. They were blinded. Jesus looked at the man. He did something really unusual at this point. He didn't heal him. He took him by the hand, took him out of the village, outside the village, away from the culture, away from the influence of the people that have been around him, away from the influence of peer pressure, away from all those people that were right there. And he took him away from those people. There are times to where we can't see clearly as long as we're hanging out with the wrong people. Let me say that again. There are times I will not be able to see the way clearly if I'm hanging out with the wrong people. And there are times we have to make a really tough decision. I got to leave town. I got to move. I got to go in a different direction. Jesus took this man, led him away from the village, then turned to him and did something that we're just going to say, ooh. He spit on his hands and touched the man's eyes with his spit. We just say, ooh. That man standing there blind felt the coolness and the wetness of Jesus' hands. And then Jesus said, open your eyes. What do you see? He said, I see men walking around as trees. So I asked the question, what do you know what men look like and how do you know what trees look like? So evidently he had been able to see before. But he turned around and he says, I, I don't see clearly. I, I, there's there's this, a fogginess here. I can't see exactly. There's shadows and and I don't see clearly men like trees. There are times when people are introduced to the Lord, and they got five minutes with Jesus, and they love it. 
They got an emotional experience. Things are great. Then they turn around and walk away. And they still don't see clearly. An emotional experience with Jesus isn't enough to change your life. Jesus needs to be invited into your heart, into your soul, into your spirit. Romans 12 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to submit yourself as a living sacrifice, completely holy, and be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If God's going to renew your mind, it's not going to be five minutes with Jesus. It's not going to be one emotional experience with him. It's going to be a time when our lives come face to face with him, and then we intertwine our lives with him. I think there is something unique about this man. As he came face to face with Jesus, he still didn't see clearly until Jesus touched him again, put his hands on him, and the life-giving power of Jesus began to flow through that man. All the optic nerves, all the blood vessels in there, all of whatever was going on in his, it was healed in that moment. Open your eyes. And the first thing he saw was Jesus, clearly. He could see Christ clearly. And then he saw the blue of the sky, the white of the clouds. He saw the color of clothes. He saw the shape of people. He saw the color of the ground again. He saw a little boy running around. He saw the color of a mangy dog. He saw life. He saw the world that God had created through the eyes that God had healed, that God had touched in that moment. And it was a brand new world. It was a whole world. It was a clear world. He saw the world through the eyes that had been touched by Jesus, there's a time in your life you didn't see the world as Jesus saw the world. There was a time in your life you saw heartache and you saw depression and you saw addictions and you saw a world in which there was no hope. But when Jesus touches us and he fills our hearts and our lives and salvation occurs and we are a new creation in him, I have a new set of eyes. And Jesus told him, don't go back to where you just came from. Don't go back to that village. You go home now. There are times in our lives just like we have to move away from some folks. We don't go back to that old influence. There are times I've known it in individuals. You have too. I've known of alcoholics gotten clean only to have their friends come back from their old life. And the next thing you know, they're off the wagon again. The influence of the old crowd. We have to move away from that. We have to move on. He says, don't go back to that old village. Don't go back there. I'm giving you a new direction in life. Moving forward into a new world that's out there. And he walked home a changed man. Well, Jesus, the disciples, went on from there. He's not done with a lesson here. Because in a few villages over, in an afternoon, perhaps they're dusty and tired, and they've just gone through another village, and Jesus turns, perhaps, while they're taking a break. And he asks them a question that's really important. Matthew expands on this. Matthew 16 just broadens it a little bit. But Mark lays it out there for us, too. Jesus turns to the disciples. Do the people around us have an opinion about me? Well, duh. Everybody's got an opinion about Jesus, don't they? Everyone does. Even people who don't believe in Jesus have an opinion about who Jesus is in their lives. And so they say, what are people saying about me? And Peter speaks up for the crowd and says, well, some people say you're John the Baptist. That's kind of ridiculous because John the Baptist had just been killed. How can he be John the Baptist? I never understood that kind of reply. Some people think you're Elijah. The Jewish people actually believe that Elijah was going to come back from the dead because Elijah never died. He was taken to, to heaven in a whirlwind behind a fiery chariot or something over there. They thought he was going to come back and preach to the people. And the Messiah would come. And so maybe he's Elijah. That's a little better idea. Or maybe you're just a prophet. Maybe just a good guy. Maybe just a healer. People really don't know. But the most important thing Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? What's your opinion about Jesus? One day was sitting up here and, uh, on the border restaurant, Anna and I and some other people from our church, and we asked the waitress, can I ask you a question? 
who do you think Jesus is? And she looked at us and said, he's my Lord and my Savior. Wow. No question that moment. Not very many people can say that. Because people around the world will say he's a phony, he's a teacher, he was a good guy. Supposedly he died for us. And they got all kinds of ideas. They know about Christmas and Easter. But Jesus asked the most important, who do you say I am? Do you see Jesus? What would it take for you to see Jesus clearly? To see him with clarity. And to see yourself with clarity. Who you really are in the eyes of Jesus. You are the Christ the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You're it. You're the answer. You are the answer to the world. You're the one we've been looking for. You're the one that's coming into this world to seek and to save the world. You're it. And Jesus said at that moment, kind of strangely, he says, well, listen, don't tell anybody yet. Don't tell anybody. The time's going to come, and he's going to give them the marching orders. Go unto all the world. And tell the world now. But at that moment, kind of keep it quiet because Jesus is in charge. It wasn't quite ready yet. Guess what? We're in the time when Jesus said, tell the world. Your job and my job is to tell the world, to point people to Jesus, point Jesus out. Because the reality is sometimes we need a little help to see. When I was in high school geometry, I could never quite see it. Then I got in algebra two, it was worse Physics, I never saw it, never could see it, and I needed help to be able to see it, and a couple of people just saw it instantly. We got some folks in this room, you've got algebra two down, physics down, trigonometry, you can handle it. The rest of us, we're blind. Yes, we need someone who can point it out to us. We need someone who could make it clear for us. There are people in our world that can't see who Jesus is. Let me give you an illustration. Look at this picture. What do you see in that picture? Is that Ernie on a motorcycle? Or maybe that's a bunny rapid. What is that? Huh. What do you think that is? You need someone to point it out to you, don't you? Okay, look at the next slide. What is that? Oh, it's a cow looking right at you, isn't it? Wow, look at the next slide. You see that cow now, can't you? Because someone pointed it out to you. There are times where the world can't see who Jesus is until someone comes alongside of them and points it out. Here's how Jesus is at work. Here's how it works. Here's how you can know him. And God wants to bring clarity to who, who Jesus is in our lives and in the world. But when he does, we begin to see the world in a different way, like that blind man who went home that day with eyes that saw a brand new world through the eyes of Jesus because your world will change in those moments, like those glasses that my father gave me when I was three or four years old and I wore it till I was about 15 and then I put on another pair that my high school teachers had and my peers did and then professors, guess what? I can't really see you very good here. You're kind of distorted. But when the Lord comes into my life and he begins to take all that stuff away and clarity comes in, I begin to see the world in a whole new way. And now I have an answer to those questions. Those three questions I asked a while ago, where did the world come from? Are people precious in God's sight? How does God feel about people, about the unborn baby? about the handicapped child, about the handicapped adult? How does God feel about the old people? How does God feel about the person that can't read? How does God feel about the person who's riding that motorcycle? How does God feel about the guy with a long beard? How does God feel? And on and on we go, don't we? Because we, in our minds, we got classifications and we would place value on one person and not another person. We would say the person with the PhD and all the five master's classes they've taken, those people got value. I don't. The brain surgeon, he's got value. Yeah, I don't have any value. The baby that can't do anything but, need, but poop and eat, what kind of value? What can he offer to the world? Guess what? The Bible has an answer that you and I are precious in his sight, all of us. John chapter 1 
answers the question of who made this world and what in the world is going on. Look at these verses that are here. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. That word, Word, refers to Jesus. That is a title given to Him. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. All things were created by Him and for Him. In Him, we live and breathe. We were created by Him. Him. Our world was created by God, not by some amoeba that crawled out of a muddy mess of stuff and turned into a monkey. Not at all. There is a purpose in our lives, and there is a reason for our lives. And when God created you in your mother's womb, he knit you together. He gave you a specialness. Nobody has your thumbprint. Nobody has the same tone of voice that you have. Nobody has the same shape of tongue that you have. You are unique, and you are a person created in the image of God from the moment of conception. You were not a blob of tissue inside your mama. You were a person created in the image of God. And when you were born, you just changed locations. Location does not give you value in your life. If that's true, then everybody that's in this church is more valuable than the people that are up here and on the border Mexican food restaurant place. Location, geography is not what gives you value. Where you standing at this moment is not what makes you special. What makes you special is you were created in the image of God. And God has a purpose for you. And he doesn't want you going through your life aimlessly blindly he created us how in the world did things get broken you see you have an idea about it you have an attitude you have an opinion about it and how in the world did things get broken i'm going to give you one little word and that word is sin when adam and eve sinned they brought disorder into this world for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god none of us have a corner on the market though some of us kind of act that way. All of us have the ability to do wrong, to think wrong, to be wrong. Every man has the same problems. Every woman deals with the same issues. There is no temptation taken man such as all of them are common to man. But with that temptation, God will give us a way of escape. God is faithful in our lives. He has come to redeem us and set us free in a world that is broken. In a world that's broken by man's sin, by our sin, by our attitudes, by our prejudices, by the inability to cope with stress, the inability to deal with life issues, so that people come up with some crazy ideas that the world would be a better place or their life would be a better place if they shoot someone, if they blow someone up. Last Sunday, a father got on a motorcycle and went to a church strapped with a bomb around him. He put his two teenage sons on two other motorcycles and sent them to a second church with bombs strapped around them. He sent his wife with his two little girls on another motorcycle with bombs strapped around them. And within a 30-minute period, that man blew up three churches and his family, thinking the world would be a better place. That's sin. That's brokenness. Our world has been broken by people's stupid ideas and the craziness of Satan. And there is only one solution, and that solution is Jesus. Our world has a lot of opinions about how to fix the brokenness. Some people want to take the guns away. Some people want to take the cars away. Some people want to take this away or that away and say, well, everybody be better if we do that. If we just make everybody more educated, well, I'm for education. But if you educate a little devil, what have you got? If you got an educated devil, that's all it is. Something has to happen in the heart of a man. Something has to happen to change a man's life. And that's only Jesus. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is only one way to life. Only one gift that's going to lead us into eternity with God. There's only, only one way way to change this world, and that's through Jesus Christ. 
He will change your life. We are a new creation in him. And he will change your outlook. He'll give you new eyes. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you a new attitude. He will change your life. And there are people in this room that could stand up and say amen right now. Is that right? Let's say it again. Did Jesus change your life? Yes. And I would say today, he can change your life today. We started out to point people towards Jesus, celebrating in memory of Jamie Applewhite's life, who poured her life into teenagers' lives, wanting to point them towards Jesus. And if you're here today and you have never given your heart to the Lord Jesus, you've been thinking about it, you've wondered about it, it's not clear in your mind, this is your day. This is it. This is the day. In just a moment, we're going to stand they're going to Pastor Jeremiah and some others are going to be right here in the front. We'll have Ernie over here, okay, Ernie, and some other people over here. And if you're here today and you never invite the Lord Jesus into your life, I want to ask you to come to one of these fellows and say, I need Jesus in my life today. I want to give my life to him. If there's someone in your life today that you know is not seeing Jesus clearly, Someone needs to point Jesus out to them. I want to ask you to come to one of these fellows and say, would you pray with me as I go talk to John and I could point Jesus out to him. You come to them and pray with them. Right now, before we stand, though, I want us to just take a moment and we're going to pray together. And we're just going to, I'm going to pray a prayer that, that represents inviting Christ into our life. It's not words that save me. What did... Anthony read from Romans 10, for with the mouth confession is made into salvation, for with the heart you believe, and say with the mouth what you believe. Words that need to be an expression of the heart. Father, please forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. I don't understand this, but Lord, I need you in my life, and I want to start following you. I need clarity my life. I'm going to pray that prayer right now. And if you've never invited the Lord into your life, you pray with me as we bow our heads. Father, in this moment, your Holy Spirit is here in this place. And Father, there's someone here that needs to give their life to you. So in this moment, as your spirit moves in their heart, you pray with me. Father, I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. I don't understand this, but I know I need help in my life. Please forgive me of my sins. I give you my life today. I want to start following you. I want to see the road clearly, Lord, the path to follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us, please, as Jeremiah and others are going to come here in the front? If you prayed that prayer with me a moment ago, I'm going to invite you to come and speak with Jeremiah or Ernie or some other people that are going to be right up here. Or if you listen to that prayer and you know I need to do that, you come to one of these folks. Or there's someone in your life you know needs to be pointed to Jesus and you want someone to pray with you for that person. You come. God's Spirit is speaking in your life. You come while we sing. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see His wounds, His hands, His feet My Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. 
Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Then on the third, at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. Oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore for endless days we will sing your praise O oh Lord O oh Lord our God he shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face Let's sing this out church Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we were broken in our sin, Lord, and you restored us. You brought us out of that darkness, Lord, the dominion of darkness, and you have washed us clean. Jesus, there are many of us in this room who can testify that, Jesus, you love sinners and you redeem broken lives. You take rebellious hearts, stubborn hearts, selfish and lazy hearts, and you transform them into something beautiful that pursues you, Jesus. But Lord, there are still hearts in this room that do not know you, that think they know you, or are angry at you. Lord, and they need to see you clearly. I pray that as we continue to worship you, that these words will not be words just that we say and sing, but they will be words that we proclaim with our hearts. Jesus, nothing can stand against you. You are powerful and you are good. Let us continue to worship you, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. When I feel like a world's apart 
I remember that I'm in your heart with you. You're all I've got. If I really had to count the cost, not a second or a minute's lost with you. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay the same, and I won't forget. Oh, when I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle, my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert, my only drink. Fearless, I'll take a stand. My God is the great I am. Oh, He's the great I am. sparkle in your eyes for me in the night when I'm broken I will fix my eyes your defender and you win the fight for me you never ever change you're the great I am you always stay the same and I won't forget Oh, when I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle, my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert, my only drink. Fearless, I'll take a stand. My God is the great I am. before the great I am. No army, no weapon, no evil can stand before the great I am. No kingdom, no power, no ruler can stand against the great I am. No evil can stand against the great I am. No sickness, no pain, no depression can stand against no hunger, no fear, no injustice can stand against no kingdom, no power, no ruler can stand against the great I am. You overflow in the wreckage Your word is gold in the valley You are my strength in the battle My victory in the chaos You are my peace in the desert My only drink Fearless, I'll take a stand My God is the great I am Oh, He's the great I am the great I am. One voice. He's the great I am. Thank you, God. Amen. You may be seated. If you're a guest with us here at South Peoria, we're glad you joined us for this special Sunday. And every Sunday we give our tithes and our offerings 
Um, these are our gifts. These are offerings that we bring to God and we give to him. So if you're a guest with us, don't feel obligated to give. This is something that we as Christians do every week to worship God because he is so good to us. So we're going to take a moment and pray for our tithes and our offerings. God, we thank you. We thank you once again that we get to celebrate the legacy that Jamie lived, a life that was not for herself, but so her family can fall more in love with you, Jesus, so her church, so the students that she poured into could fall more in love with you, Jesus. Let us continue to reflect on our own lives and ask if we truly say that we follow you, but we choose not to with our lives. Let us not be hypocrites. We are broken. We are not perfect, Jesus. You are perfect. But yet we can continue to pursue you, Jesus, and be more and more like you. We pray that the, the tithes and the offerings, the gifts that we bring this morning are pleasing to you and that this is a sincere act of worship, God. We pray that you will multiply these gifts to build your kingdom so that the lost, that the lonely, that the empty can be filled, that they can be saved, Jesus. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. This past Thursday, I talked with the worship team and the sound booth team, and we talked about one question, and that was, how do you know that you're saved? And so if you've never asked that before, how do I know that I'm saved? I challenge you, church, to ask yourself that, because someone who is saved, who is a follower of Jesus, is continually changing, being transformed by God. Sometimes we call it discipline. You know, I discipline my child, I don't discipline somebody else's child, even though I want to sometimes. So if you're a child of God, you are corrected by him, you are led by him, you are transformed by him. But also you have a desire for other people to be saved. So if you're not daily, if you're not being transformed, and if you don't have a desire for other people to be saved, maybe ask that question. Because we talk about Jamie and she constantly was like, yeah, God has been showing me this. I need to change this. I need to do this. I need to transform this. And she also had a desire for the lost to be found, for the rebellious to be saved. So let us ask that question. How do I know I'm saved? Because we all will die. And my prayer is that at our funerals, it won't be what we did just for our families or what we did for ourselves, but it was what we did for Jesus. What are you doing for Jesus, church? Because if he's washed you clean, we have something to share with the world. Amen? Amen. We're going to stand together.
We're going to sing one more song, and then we'll have some instructions on food. But we're going to celebrate together. Let's sing this out. The greatest day in history. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. stand in that place free at last meeting face to face I am yours and Jesus you are mine endless joy church endless joy perfect peace earthly pain finally will cease celebrate Woo! Jesus is alive he's alive he's alive quick announcements before we, we call it a day today. I want to say thank you for everybody that, that helped with the, the memorial ride today. Thank you for Greg and the Faith Riders for putting that together. That was a, a big undertaking. Yeah. Thank you to Sean for designing the design for the t-shirts and the pen. That was awesome as well. I'm going to invite Ernie. Ernie, come on up here. Come on up here. Just a couple of directions. This is what we need your help with. Right outside, as we, I'm going to pray. we're going to have a prayer of blessing over the food and over the bikes. But uh, right outside that door right there, it says exit. There's some tables. So we're going to ask everybody, as soon as Ernie says amen here in just a minute, to help stack these chairs up. And then for some of the guys to go out and grab, there's a bunch of round tables. Bring those in and set those up so that we have somewhere to eat today, all right? And then if you've already got your tickets, you can start getting in line and get some good grub. If you don't have your tickets, you can go out into the lobby and buy some, some tickets out in the lobby. And then we'll have a good meal together and fellowship. Amen? All right, let's do it. One of the things we do when we do a, a biker event, when we open up the riding season, it's a little different for us in Arizona because the riding season is open except during the summer because it's too hot. But what we want to do is if you rode today, raise your hand. If you're sitting next to one of these people or Tim, if you raise your hand, Tim's getting ready to deploy and go down range to Afghanistan. 
We need people to lay hands and stand around these men and women as we ask a blessing on their lives. So let's stand and pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we just thank you for the blessings that you have presented in our lives. As Pastor James said today, we pray that you open our eyes, that as we go forth from here, wherever we go, whenever we go, however we go, that we take your message, that we take your love, and that as these men and women either deploy or go out and ride their bikes or just walk to the grocery store, that they take that message with you, of you with them, Lord. We ask that you open our eyes, give us clear vision. We ask that you indwell our hearts, that you may protect us, that you may hover over us, that as we go, you are with us as our Lord and Savior. We ask these things in the name and the blessing of your son. We thank you for the food that has been prepared, those who have prepared it, those who are about to serve it, Lord, that as we eat, we are nourished, that as this time of fellowship together has nourished our spirit, that we may be a witness as we go forth from here to those we come in contact with. In your name we pray. Amen.